beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed it matters to me also that you gain intelligence spiritually that you come to a point where your life is furnished with thorough understanding you are not unfruitful in the knowledge of the truth you can know god as a person and still be unfruitful in the knowledge of the systems of the kingdom you hear me say this i will keep repeating it until it becomes your convictions because the operation of God on earth, in as much as the Bible has revealed to us, is systemic. Are we together? God is the God of systems. When you encounter his person, then he grants you the ability to understand his ways, his methodology, his systems. The results that we seek are dependent on our comprehension and engaging of the systems accordingly. Are we together so on one hand we are coming into the knowledge of god intimacy here and there but then we must understand his ways listen let me tell you this our destinies the quality of our destinies on earth not only depend on the love of god for us but our ability to understand his ways of doing things are we together now to be able to replicate his reality in our environment that's the whole idea of kingdom come it's not a mystery is to be able to sustain the ability to make your life become an expression in every area every area remember there's a scripture we've been playing around with very recently the bible says second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 it says according as verse 2 says grace and peace be multiplied to you you know through the knowledge of him of our god and of our lord jesus christ verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us how many things all things that pertain unto what apostle peter would have just stopped and said his divine power hath given us all things that would have been enough but he says those all things are divided into two categories the matters that pertain unto life and the matters that pertain unto godliness everyone say after me life godliness say one more time life godliness there are matters that pertain unto godliness for instance your spiritual growth right the the issues of the spirit when i open you up to the dimensions of the spirit the anointing understanding the ways of god digging into the boils of the spirit to be able to come up with the things that help you to conform better to become a spiritual man these are the things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life the well-being of your children matters that pertain unto life is that true the ability to not be under the yoke 
of this godless system that has designed a structure to strangle any intention to be serious with God. There is a system intentionally built. That's what is captured in the mystery Babylon. A system that was built with intelligence intended to frustrate any desire to be serious with God. And so the system operates in many ways by making men busy, by making men poor, by making men mediocre, by making them frustrated to lack a sense of purpose that those who are not of the world will continue to pay tribute in cash and in kind with their time and with their lives. But there is a bailout system and the Bible says they are matters that pertain unto life. No matter how anointed you are, when you watch your child being driven out of school, it will frustrate your Christian experience. Now, I have said it again and again, we do not serve God just because of tea and bread. Listen very carefully. We don't serve God because of the things that he gives us. We serve him because of who he is and our love for him. But he has so designed in his wisdom that in serving him, you encounter other things. The ability to attend to the matters of life. Because in doing so, you demonstrate that he is a good father. Number two, in doing so, you demonstrate dominion. Number three, in doing so, it affords you the time to further commit yourself are we together there is a conspiracy it's always been there but it's been reinforced again this system of satan occupying men their time their life to never allow them serve god do you know why many of the people we call god's generals were powerful they gave god time that is the commodity that satan is fighting today in our generation time you never know anything without giving it time you meet a full animal he can whisper something to his cows and they will behave themselves because he spends time with them you don't wake up and come one morning and tell a cow move left these are animals our time with god is under attack hear me carefully our time with god that is the principal factor that sponsors our knowledge of him is under serious attack and if a generation does not stand up to say satan what are you doing our children you see these little kids running up and down they will no longer have time for god there is a system that is derailing men away and is doing it in a very subtle way it's not happening overnight you check the schedules of the average man there is nothing about god there aside from one religious devotion that is done in 10 minutes god is not you can't give god 10 minutes of your time and want to host his glory you come back to sleep you are tired and it's not like you were doing anything kingdom satan system he manipulates men like he's playing a chess something is wrong brothers and sisters this is i'm starting tonight with a clarion call something is wrong our generation really needs to seek the lord but not under the conditions that the devil has put us in you're not going to seek the lord when your rent is about killing you you will just dance around and give thanks but not to seek the lord it's amazing how we have to sit down and specially create time for god we don't specially create time for money we are seeking it all our lives we don't specially create time for fame we don't specially create time for a living but when it comes to god there has to be an extra effort it says as for me and my house it didn't say we'll be christians we will it's a commitment as for he was not saying as for a pastor who is now into this burden called ministry say as for me and my house i have made a decision that i will serve the lord our generation is under serious threat look how hard the devil has made it for an average young man to be established even at age 40 he has not even started establishment if he's to live 80 years that's half of his life gone and don't forget that when he's 60 70 
his strength may not be there again and the bible says that we should serve god in the days of our youth so he rubbishes the days of our youth so that we spend our entire life looking for what to eat what to drink trying to educate our minds trying to earn a living and then we give him some little time devotions here one program one emotional crusade here we will never it's impossible to institutionalize god to a generation that way if we want our children and our children's children to serve the lord let me tell you we must make god a big deal in our generation not a factor you add to your life if you are a christian but the basis of your living i'm concerned especially about our teenagers most of them don't know god again ask them when we were teenagers one young man who is not even serious just a sunday school goer can recite 30 verses it doesn't matter whether he loves god or not but you ask one of these are young ones to recite even john 3 16 that unbelievers who were passing around church knew you ask them and hear what they will tell you but ask them what is the latest app the latest computer game huh the latest uh, what do we call it all these funny things they are not wrong in themselves but something is happening to a generation if we don't pay attention we will cry in old age and say lord did i fail my generation these are my contemplations the level of non-attention to god is becoming a thing of concern we are going to churches sundays churches are full with members wednesday activity i'm talking of seeking the lord not as a profession for a man of god where he gets salary at the end of the month as for me and my house i will serve the lord most people who serve the lord is because they have given up on the matters of life there is no hope of sending any child to school there is no hope of anything they know they would die whether or not they serve the lord so they say okay since i have two years left let me just try to do something no our generation has brought an option be poor and fail and serve the lord or be blessed and be occupied trying to make a living who gave us that option as for me and my house i will serve the lord that one day i will come to your house on a weekday and hear sounds of worship from your gate not cassette you and your four children are serving the lord and i say by two o'clock I thought you should be earning a living and you say he showed me another system now we are serving the lord and visitors pull their mouth while they are languishing in the squalor of rebellion and watch you say pastor alpha you are serving the lord jedediah is 12 years and his teenager friends are there all around smoking their destinies away and this child is there serving the lord it is selfishness and wickedness that makes us to forget the generation that is coming i'm sorry to say it and I, I love our parents we have many of our elderly people here i love them but one of the mistakes that our fathers made was they were very selfish they did not remember that a generation was coming so all they did was to educate their minds and look for food to eat there's hardly any heritage given to a young man every young man starts almost from ground zero spiritually financially the time a young man should use building his spirit is fighting warfare because the chains that have held him at party he must spend one year contending for victory as for me and my house i can't claim it for everybody but as for me and my house we will serve the lord how many of us here got born again directly by our parents how many of you some of us were just around and salvation by the mercy of god met you in one sunday school some of you salvation met you at the point of death 
did you know that for many of us we never had the talk about God we had godliness in a religious way every time there was Bible study something happened a sound in the zinc demotion that was imminent or something that sponsored some emotional reaction say as for me and my house say as for me and my house I will serve the Lord are we together yes it matters that we make this decision right now that we will serve the Lord we will serve the Lord I've been doing a lot of counseling lately especially for our dear ones that are getting married and I look at them my first concern is will your home serve the Lord will your life serve the Lord let me tell you there is a wicked Babylonian financial system there that was designed to make sure you don't serve the Lord how can one man do five jobs because he's trying to pay rent it's a cause you wake up by six do a job to 12 and Satan makes sure a stipend comes from there and then you start another one till four and your body is weak but you know if you don't do this you will not eat well and you start another one and in the next five years that man dies and leaves seven children look at our dear mothers something is wrong go listen to me i came tonight to talk to you from the depth of my heart it's a vow i built myself that's the truth you bail yourself through a commitment of obedience but my job is to share this with you that if we don't wake up and join ignorant people or this proud religiosity that only focuses on the matters of godliness and leaves the matters of life one day you will stand and watch you will be a mighty man of god with a big parish and your wife and you will watch your children with pity a letter come and stand before you we've been expelled not because we smoked not because we drank because the means to make it happen was not there you will be in a church and the owner will come and lock the church while service is going on and drive you out as for me and my house everything that must be put in place in my life to allow me serve God I will put in place if you can make that commitment tonight we have achieved something so far it says the things that pertain unto life and godliness and those things the equipping comes through knowledge 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 there is no shortcut to greatness there is no shortcut to glory sacrifice has always been the non-negotiable condition the sacrifice of your commitment your life your resources your attention you may not have the best of, of atmosphere and environment, but there is a determination that superimposes those things. For the sake of my generation, I will present Jesus. Are we blessed? The things that pertain unto life and godliness. There are some of us, and it really grieves my heart. As young as we are, condition as we call it has taken away our focus from god there are some of us here early 20s yet you have to be sending something home god is calling you into ministry but the focus is not there the moment he's speaking here comes the bills here comes the whatever and you know that your poor aged mother who couldn't go to school our fathers many of them largely disobedient and proud people although they don't have any result you see that and they yoke all of that the average home right now has many relatives waiting for their elder brother to marry because he's the one who will continue the education for them if all you see is poverty you are not seeing well you must see an attack on a generation if all you see is sickness you are not seeing well you must see an attack look at the long-term effect of that a day will come our men will no longer go to church because they have to work all day on sunday to add to it 
it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow so by the time the father is not there to raise the child the devil positions somebody who is now employed who now teaches that child is it, whether the father is a pastor or a bishop is not the issue look at the children of men of god this is a cry and a burden that is boiling in my heart we must redeem not only ourselves but redeem a generation we must start thinking transgenerationally don't say you are too young if the entire scope of your life is just me my marriage my home my this no you must start thinking you see that when koinonia started this young boy seated here was in the loins of prophecy today he's now hearing you will be surprised one day now this small boy you see will be going to secondary school one day he will be writing jam and you will open your eyes and see that i made a mistake i cannot correct again many of us seated here the reason why our lives are delayed is because we have to pay the price that was made by our parents before we start building our own lives you've not even started building your own life yet you are paying a debt you know nothing about then when you are 50 and have paid then you now start your own life it's an attack listen to me very carefully it's an attack an attack on the integrity of god an attack on a generation that can seek god all these revelations that we dish out in the body of christ will soon become useless if we ignore these things because there will be nobody to hear them again all the dimensions of heavens and the stars and the constellations we would talk to ourselves as men of god on stage while everybody runs around everywhere trying to make a living make a living is a cause there are many of our parents is in their deathbed they will confess that i was called to be a prophet to my generation called to be a prophet they would have been at the dimension of Benihim today. Imagine how many destinies would have been changed if they answered the call. But they were hijacked. And they only see the visions in their parlor. God shows them global events and they are there. No grace and influence to effect it. You read about these generals. Some of them can hold one year of prayer. You know, sometimes men of god hold prayer meetings is it not those who have eaten that will come if i hold a prayer meeting five days in a week pastor alpha you're a lecturer except god grants you grace should you can't be effective you are only effective when you have options and that's what satan wants to make sure a whole generation does not have no option no option there is an attack on our generation we must open our eyes and see it this is not just the issue of money this is not the issue of influence this is the issue of the destiny of a generation the prophetic destiny the prophets labored in the bible and prophesied about our generation and they died not seeing this now we have come in the scene and many of us are just playing games with our lives doing the same old things that brought pain to us so that our own children will cry i want to serve the lord not because i'm a preacher i want to serve the lord because my life was meant to be a revelation of his glory i want to serve the lord i want to be the one to coach my children not sunday school son sit down let me teach you the bible not police station teach my child how to live not a rehab center teach your child or daughter how to live is god speaking to us tonight i'm challenging you there is a serious burden in my heart if we do not arise for our generation let me tell you very soon you will be laboring on your child and the lawless children of another person who is not listening to what i'm saying will be there to become the strongholds we not only must care about our children we must care about our generation one child 
90% of our children are influenced to be bad. They are not bad on their own. You are laboring to train them. There is another godless man somewhere and they all meet in the same place. And Cain dominates Abel and make our children feel sorry for being Christians. You look at many of us here, you are looking at me now. Look how ashamed you are if you are in the social sphere. Now you are in church, you are jumping. But once you are there, are you drinking? No, I don't drink. Are you this? No, you don't. and they look at you, oh, what a child. This guy, his eyes have no... And you feel so guilty for loving God and being attention and paying attention to him. It's like the in thing now is rebellion. You are a man to the degree to which you are stubborn, lawless, rebellious, and proud. That's what we are marketed to a generation. That is the portrait of a superhero that our children are learning. If you must be a superhero, be rebellious. Be a bully. Be everything but a Christian. The average young child is not interested in church again again you invite them find out how many teenagers come for koinonia you'll be surprised there are young people there are old people but the teenagers don't come it's not because it's night they stroll around and then go around and do a lot of things and satan comes he wants to capture that generation but in the name of jesus christ there are people who will say no way there are people who will create a spiritual barricade that as the priest of my home, no way. Satan, there is no entrance. Huh? That gentleman who was talking about Aleko or whatever it is, look at now. That a time will come, your child will be saying, Mommy, we are from Benue, but what is that? You say, I settled it already. Don't worry. It was well settled. That, that discussion, just one day I will tell you about the story. That once upon a time in our village, people don't reach 30. But I stood as an altar and I settled it. Are we together? And one of the deceptions, let me begin to build my discussion tonight now. One of the deceptions that I think God is granting me grace to connect tonight is what I call the danger of imbalance write it down the danger the catastrophic danger of imbalance it not only matters that we communicate truth it matters that the truth we communicate must be the whole counsel of God Everybody say the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God is a definition of all his intention. Everything he desires for a people within a time period to know about him represents the whole counsel of God for that dispensation. And one of the things that you see Satan playing out right now is an attempt to use religion as a tool that sponsors imbalance in our quest seeing then that he cannot stop us from having an appetite for god he now begins to sell imbalance to believers and let me tell you something brothers and sisters imbalance is as dangerous as falsehood imbalance is as dangerous as a lie Let's examine a few things before I talk about imbalance. I shared one time about three great errors that the Lord revealed to me in the body of Christ. If you remember, when we were talking about the body of Christ, let me do a quick recap. That the Lord began to reveal to me that there were three great errors in the body of Christ. The first error is found in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. He said, the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. We're examining the first error now. Giving heed to seducing spirits and then the doctrine of devils. Everyone say the doctrine of devils. Another word for this is apostasy. Apostasy, a deviation 
from God's known pattern of operation apostasy the first error that the body of Christ has to contend with is the error of apostasy listen to my message the apostate church apostasy a deviation from the truth and also a deviation from God's pattern two things there a deviation from the truth is called apostasy but a deviation from the pattern of communicating that truth is also apostasy even if the information is correct but the spiritual system of transferring it is wrong it is still apostasy are we together in God's dealings with men both the information and the pattern are important not just the information don't just say the most important thing is that I'm healed the most important thing is that I prosper the most important thing is that I get anointed no sir there is a predefined pattern when God looks at you and you are doing business with God what you got is not as important as how it came don't just say I was anointed don't just say I was prosperous don't just say I I got married don't just say I had a child God is obsessed with patterns that if you must host his glory then there must be a formation that must be according to pattern apostasy I teach that there are two dimensions to apostasy number one the communicator of the message himself not being of God that's the first dimension where they whether as a man of God as a businessman whoever attempting to communicate anything the plan from the beginning was deception intrinsically the communicator himself is of the devil there is such a possibility in the body of Christ and in our environment not just apostate informations apostate people people who are not they were never never of God from the first place are we blessed and then number two the people the communicators of those truths may be genuine but the information they are communicating is a doctrine of demons you can be genuine sincere let me take ministry as a case study you can be a sincere man of god you love god you are not fake but the content of your communication is a doctrine that is not sponsored by the spirit of christ the bible says that some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and then doctrines of demons i can be a genuine man of god genuinely anointed by god but because of a system the bible calls seduction are we together now i can deviate from god's way of doing things and now become a communicator i am not fake but my message is not genuine both of these cases can be classified as apostasy so that's the first error the second error that i teach is the error of individualism also the error of indifference write it down indifference what we call i don't care attitude right individualism we don't think kingdom we don't think generational we think me so if a jimmy's leg is having a problem provided it has not affected me it's none of my business this is where many many men of god many many of we pastors pentecostals especially have missed it we have missed it big time in this area we are so individual individualistic we don't care about what is happening to the body provided my church provided my life is immune for it, from it to hell with the body are we together yeah so if the danger has not come to meet me it doesn't matter if an arm robber comes to steal in a pastor's church nearby it was not my church it was not my member my kingdom financier was not robbed so pastor may god bless you if someone dies provided he's not a member of my church it's amazing how we leaders mentor people to deliberately select being in the body is not enough you must be associated 
with me to be able to enjoy certain benevolence that is meant for the body it's a poisonous spirit the error of indifference the error of individualism when god begins to build his army his system of operation is that he takes us beyond individualism and connects us as an organism if your leg is having pains your head can pain you because of the leg is that true um we're returning back from kano and we stopped at a filling station to get fuel and one guy was marketing a funny product you know these guys that market something at the filling station and he said um there's a the drug or the lotion whatever it is is for teeth <laughs> but you rub it on your leg <laughs> yes he said you don't have to rub the thing on your teeth you just rub it on your leg now that, that's a body consciousness at least i didn't buy it but he taught me that the leg is related to the teeth because we have been taught to apply drugs only where it hurts and leave other parts and he said no no let me show you another formula you can apply it in the leg but it can touch the teeth that means i can pray from zaria and god can preserve kenneth copeland because it is the body i can hear that there is an attack on a man of god and not say after all they don't listen say no no lord this whatever it is he's part of the body his integrity is our integrity as the body and lord arise in your mercy for your namesake but we keep becoming individualistic you as believers what is your pride our pride let me tell you the pride of our generation three things one revelation rema the extent to which you bring an exegesis of the truth and nothing is wrong with that right greek words hebrew words play around with all kinds of concordances and then dish out mysteries we love that two prophecy if i give you a prophetic word which is not bad three anointing and our definition of anointing is fall down not result fall down just make sure you hit that bench as a testament that the communicator is having something and so this erroneously become the pivot of our pursuit we're looking for revelation we're looking for an ability to communicate which is is is, is to be desired and then we're looking for an anointing to make sure when we step into a meeting people just fall up and down and when these things happen we believe that we are fine and we don't extend the scope of our alliance to god to extend beyond our personal comfort to think body in terms of administration you know i love koinonia thank god this is where he's planted me but in terms of the health of the church i am passionately concerned about the body of christ just follow me we are going somewhere tonight are we blessed the third error that i teach um, i have taught this already so is what i call exaggerated confrontation of error this is where it even gets sad exaggerated confrontation of error that means that error that is attempted to be corrected but not from a standpoint of love error that is attempting to be corrected from a standpoint of intrinsic intimidation by the supposed corrector now listen very careful you see please come Jimin. can i use you Amen. when you see Jimin, one word you think wealth finances <laughs> right well anointing too anointing Look, at least last week you saw it <laughs> praise god now watch this chances are that if god has called a jimmy to represent um that dimension of maybe the holy spirit and finances to people and i have a bias with finances either as a result of men, my mentality or my frustrations two of them can cause the same thing i can have a poor mentality or i can be secretly frustrated now if there is an imbalance in a Jimmy's life or his way of communicating that chances are that because i was angry since even before the imbalance came now that i have found a scapegoat of a lapse in him i will correct it in a way you know it was paining me this is not the point is not to correct the point is to vent out pain 
there is a big this exaggerated confrontation is even more deadly than error itself i once had a well somewhere a man of god was talking about those who was saying they teach people how to pray in tongues somewhere you know trying to be sarcastic that man himself does not pray in tongues he doesn't believe it but there is no there's no legitimate case for him to fight it so he now routes through a church or a man of god that he sees teaching people he now uses that one exception this is how you know error is exaggerated a man of god or a businessman or whatever picks one single error and robs it off beyond the proportion of his relevance you know that the, the goal is not to sponsor correction the goal is to help manage intimidation are we together now so Ejimi talks about money and all of that and all of a sudden i'm there in my frustration and i turn and i say be careful all these guys that just talk about money all the time the truth of the matter is that i may be right in speaking about that unique situation but it's not coming from a standpoint that wants to contribute to the health of the body i am only communicating because i am intrinsically frustrated thank you sir are we blessed some of us here seated looking at me have become victims even of this it tells on how we hate anointed people it tells on how we hate wealthy people are we together now yes and so we try everybody right now is in the ministry of correction that is the latest anointing that is going all around everybody is correcting everybody everybody once you have access to a mic and you can talk and people can hear you everybody is correcting everybody let me tell you this the greatest danger in the church now is not error the greatest danger is imbalance and this imbalance has come from this third point this is where i want to build my case tonight so pay attention so that you find out whether you are part of it and trust god to help you tonight everybody shout imbalance, imbalance. there is something about the limitation of pentecostals that our orthodox brothers and sisters capitalize on and use it as the basis why you should not be open to the things of the holy spirit then there are things that the pentecostals use as their excuse for thinking an orthodox lifestyle is too mean and basic and all of that and all of them may have some sense of justification but the truth is that there is an inner anger for one another just waiting for a legitimate excuse are we together now yeah whether it is an issue of marriage or finances or fidelity or issues that have to do with um, administration and leadership whatever it is how you know that correction is not coming from a sincere point is the exaggeration exaggeration i always say you use a, a hammer to kill a fly a simple tap on that fly it would die but when you use hammer you were angry it's not about the fly the fly just happens to be what the hammer is hitting obviously that hammer was not designed for the fly it's just that the fly got in the way of the hammer and boy will that hammer hit the fly there is a spirit of pride listen carefully it looks like it's coming from god but i'm exposing lucifer there is something satan is doing in the especially among we men of god that god has privileged to have access to revelation and anointing and a dimension of the miraculous pride is gradually eating us up because we believe that because of the little results we have we have authority by ourselves to correct everybody and everything every man of god is trying to show what another man is doing wrong everyone is trying to show that this is wrong why are you praying like this the other one will say you too why are you keeping quiet when you are praying the other one said, what is the meaning of warfare? The other one said, keep waiting. Demons are coming. See, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Listen very carefully. Listen carefully. If we do not trust God to rise up and correct these imbalances, we are going to authorize Satan to destroy us. God's goal is not to produce koinonia in all the earth. If God gives me an assignment 
and says apostle through you the gospel will get to the ends of the earth he was talking to all the people who will come out spiritually and prophetically through my loins through there are ministries that will come out of me they are an extension of that instruction the idea is not to turn every believer in nigeria into koinonia it's a failed project from day one and anybody who knows god will never be part of that failed agenda so god is not glorified when koinonia has more members god is glorified when the kingdom advances listen very carefully because right now the entire scope of our soul winning agenda is sometimes is even sheep stealing i say this because i love the body you are sitting quietly taking fresh air someone comes to preach to you you say okay i'm already born again as soon as he's leaving you another person is coming say your brother just we say it doesn't matter you just listen have you have you been given um, um are you are you aware of our church services he say yes he say come and the next time you see him look how people feel guilty and blackmailed because i invited you for koinonia you didn't come and you make it look like you are the worst sinner in the whole world you are just because you did not come that's not salvation that's pressure like banks give people target bring this by this month we have begun to propose some of those campaigns and we must be careful kingdom advancement is not the advancement of a name of a church is the advancement of the agenda of god in the hearts of men and across the spheres now it 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 is important that the individual ministries do their best to be the the platforms for people to be saved and equipped but that's not the idea there are people it's one of the reasons why pastors never invite people to their pulpit because someone comes and in two minutes before he preaches he has said almost 90 things about his church and sometimes some can even be sarcastic to downplay the church that now invited them you hear about people who go for conferences and before you know it while in that conference he saw a keyboard is playing well he saw a worshiper singing well and the man of god will collect their numbers travel back and now call them and begin to indoctrinate them you are you you sound too good your pastor doesn't deserve you come and join a moving train we say and then the member now leaves his church to join the supposed moving train and then we make it look like god is only with us it is pride let me repeat the idea that makes you believe you are the only representation of god in a territory is pride the day koinonia believes that we are the only and even the ultimate representation of god in this region is a sign that error has already eaten beginning from me to everyone may god forbid it are we together now yes this is the basis behind the show of superiority from men of god to churches to business people imbalance imbalance the the inability to construct the truth of god's word so that it becomes edifying to you and to the body now let me teach you something the dealings of god has a side effect watch this i've shared it here that if god calls me into the healing ministry watch this because of the character and the nature of my training are we together it will require a level of meticulousness in a dimension chances are that because of my concentration i will trivialize other matters of the kingdom too they are important but because they were not captured in my training process i will assume that they are not important are we together now so when i now come up this is the healing evangelist evangelist joshua selman and i'm healing and when i see somebody in another dimension is the reason why we reject certain ministries in the body because we have not been trained you see young people come and dance and while they are dancing someone is just waving his head and say what a wasted generation simply because the way god trained you that was not captured as part of the experience of the training so you can downplay it then to mean that these are not serious things when people come to church they sleep and snore every other time until the man of god comes in now the god has been moving since praise and worship you were not taught to respect it 
a time of worship people are rolling on the floor god is speaking to people someone has received his breakthrough already but you were trained that until someone stands on stage so if the man of god now comes and starts rolling you say what kind of church is this you don't preach here i want you to listen to me very carefully why am i teaching you this because god is helping us to be a blessing to many others are we together in balance there are many people in the body of christ whose ministries have been strangled no room to find expression simply because the man of god who founded the church the experience of allowing those ministries to find expression were not captured in his dealings with god and so because of that the moment you see any other ministry that is outside your scope of understanding you fight it you abuse it you can call it of the devil you blackmail it amazing do you know why god limits you like this so that it is in partnership with other dimensions in the body you see how complete the body is you see that so if god has granted me grace to walk in a dimension of the teaching ministry and i don't walk say in miracles and sam come sam sam walks in the miraculous it is my identifying with sam it now supplies a dimension of god that i wouldn't have seen are we together now for sam the way god dealt with him it was just vision and power so when sam comes to the stage he said look stop all this grammar of bible study let's go straight to wheelchairs he is also in error he does not know it's just that his own nature of ministry is what is desired by the masses they want power immediately so chances are that you will see that in sam's church you receive miracles but there's no spiritual growth because the system he just the it was the god almighty god that was the revelation that was given to him for you the rabbi of rabbis that's what you got so you can sit down and teach one series for one year and then i reject you i say sam all it takes is mental transformation not power people need to be leaders and then sam is saying continue there you are watching your members crying what they need is power both of them god is with them but they believe god is not with each other you see that mistake please can i use you again please come and then all of a sudden this guy comes he's a leader he's an entrepreneur he's a businessman and i said look all these your business principles i laid hands on somebody a millionaire's child without knowing any finance thing and all of a sudden they gave me an estate all these things you are trying to teach people is nonsense teach them power and estate comes and the members ignore this principle and they find out that estate didn't come after 10 years the man is married now the preacher got an estate but the hearer didn't get it are we together now all three of them now chances are that a jimmy may be angry and say look at this guy power 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 let's see whether you ever rise to the government this is the fight now everybody let me tell you what satan does when satan wants to destroy you if he knows there's nothing he can do about your anointing he covers you from seeing the body so the only thing you see is your church and your performance and based on that he will now use supposed loyal sons to keep you in that state the power when you came into that meeting you know i like you you don't talk anything no verse the bible was not open straight to power and he say you mean it you were impressed say yes now this is a group here hiding themselves and shortchanging themselves in imbalance yet they will believe that because the man sees visions he has the entire scope of what god is doing and then he will have the effort to now indoctrinate his members into believing that anytime you see our teacher man or anytime you see our businessman ignore them just get power and rest and that's what is happening so we have a congregation of people today who have no regard for the word of god turn to philippians that you see them just snoring once you hear so ah, 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 you see, that's right this is i mean we are, we are in church now that's all people want 
and while that shout is going on the business guy says when you finish go and pay your rent shout roll on the floor your rent is the, the tribute collectors are there and you can't say he's not godly because he's rich and he's with part of the money your church was built so the pastor can't shout at him you know what it will mean to you look at the confusion now let me tell you no one of these three will admit they are incomplete it is one of the hardest things for men of god to do to admit that regardless of what they have seen they need to spread their horizon beyond the scope that was revealed to them to see the body it is in the seven lampstands that the fullness of christ was seen the seven lampstands i had a voice when i turned i didn't see christ i saw the complete church with all the dimensions when i saw the complete church i saw the fullness of christ if i had seen two of them i would see only his hands and think god is a hand then i see another church and see his eyes and think all to god is prophecy then i see another church and i see his legs and i think all in life is progress but the complete church revealed the complete christ is god speaking to us this is a revelation that will bless you beyond imagination and so Ejimi now organizes a seminar to correct people and gathers all his members and say look all those power guys don't mind them all those revelation guys the bible says money answer it that's the members answering him now all things whereas there's somebody dying in the hospital with cancer a millionaire that money cannot do anything about are we together now answer it all things and if any of his member dare ask him and say sir why don't the power of god work in you say are you stupid am i not rich is that not power you see that person becomes a disloyal person imagine how many of us are called disloyal for asking questions pastor we don't pray in tongues in this church but is it all right don't ever ask me i am this i am that don't go and join all those riffraff roadside prophets man of god is it okay if i meet a man of god to hear the counsel of god no the word is everything just focus on the word don't let any roadside prophet come and deceive you whereas that man is in utter confusion and five minutes of this ministry can correct 10 years in his life many members would have moved forward if only they went to where the eyes of god is but they refuse because the pastor has the hand of god and they keep seeing the hand of god the hand does not see it only holds what the eyes see listen to me because many of us are starting ministry now some of us are in ministry some of us are leaders and already we are if we are not careful we're get, we're getting into big error we've been mentored by all kinds of people that's why i see as a man of god if god gives you any influence over people go and pray and say lord let me not raise a people that will be defiant from your patterns i say it with all humility not to blow the trumpet of this ministry but by his grace koinonia has been part and parcel of the building and the lifting of many ministries as a person we have account numbers of many ministries that i'm not even connected to they are not my friends we could just hear that there is a program somewhere and say look we have to do something the other day i think dunamis came and they were opening their branch here our protocol department all of them they said no, let's go and serve i said quickly make sure that anything that is needed let it be given my koinonia I am apostle I'm the owner of Zaria God gave it to me it's my property no this is why men of God don't sleep this is why men of God yoke members with covenant swear that you will stay why will I swear why you change clothes why why shouldn't I change? I mean I, I should swear that what no or we now make it prophetic God told me the day you leave me or the day you do this there is a cause where this is a lie there is no cause coming anywhere anywhere just because someone is falling down when we are saying it does not mean it's a lie there is no cause anywhere even god you can choose to leave him i said before you life and death why will somebody come and threaten you let me tell you the truth i love the body but it's a lie 
it's our insecurity it's not the holy spirit don't blame the, the holy spirit has no part in this people stay when they are changed people don't just become loyal to a leader foolishly don't you know that in the kingdom you keep things by leaving them hmm. whosoever keeps his life shall lose it whosoever keeps his members shall whosoever tries to keep money shall but whosoever loses it for my sake are you learning something thank you sir thank you. exaggeration now let me teach you something it is true that there are erroneous things in the body but hear me correcting the body of christ is a ministry you have to be called into it the same way god calls someone to be a prophet you are called is part of the apostolic and prophetic system of governance and it's not just every apostle and every prophet that is a corrector even among apostles and prophets there are rankings and dimensions not just because you're an apostle or prophet or pastor or teacher i am pastor so 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 i read in harvard i am no no sir we are misleading people there are spiritual conditions for you to have the authorization to be shown the weakness of the body let me tell you this you can observe what you think is the weakness of the body but god can show you what is the weakness of the body there is a condition to end that level of intimacy from God where God can show you this is where my body is weak correct it hey Jimmy if your son or your wife feels down do you just walk to anybody on the street and say my wife my son has a little rashes here or my son has knife cut him here and you open your son's cloth do you do that you go to an authorized place called a hospital and even in that hospital you enter a room and if need be in that room you can pull up and you are comfortable because it is the authorized place where that matter is addressed if you pull your son's cloth on the road somebody will look at you and say man of god what is going on but if you pull your son's cloth there it is the place not every place is a place of correction let me tell you this there is a condition you must sustain as a man of God to be afforded the opportunity to contribute in correcting the body. And that element is not prayer. That element is not fasting. That element is not even revelation. That element is genuine love for the body. Not for God, for the body. You will never be given access to correct the body until you love that body. You can't correct the body from the standpoint of hatred. You can't correct the body from the standpoint of resentment. You can't correct the body from the standpoint of error. It's impossible. If I hate keyboards and this guy is making a mistake, I don't have the right to correct him. Because my correction will meet with a bias that has been there. Let me tell you this. I travel a lot and you can ask those who travel with me, I go to all kinds of churches and they do all kinds of things. Sometimes I am surprised when I see what people do in many churches. My mind, I say, if I catch my child doing that kind of thing, we will talk, oh, we will talk seriously. Yet, I am able to have the accommodation. Let me give you a secret. If you look at Christ in every church, you will find him. Mm. Let me repeat. They went to a tomb where there was no life and found jesus there a tomb where there is no life yet when the woman kept looking she saw jesus in that tomb is it in your bible the living have nothing to do in the grave but a woman was determined to see jesus and although her location was the grave she still saw him so that dead church that you think your pastor is as dead as whatever the day your heart is humble and you know that the builder is not a man of god but the spirit of god one day in the confusion of your pastor he will say something that is the secret for your lifting now we who god has helped with little revelation little grace here this is what we do when we go to church we hold our bibles arrogantly and sit at the back we don't sit in front because the man doesn't have anything to say and then he comes as usual 
turn to the book of this and that and god so loved the world are you aware of this and someone is just nodding and say oh god i i would have listened to a message that would bless me what is this guy doing and wasting my time and you think what you are demonstrating is superiority because of spiritual level it's a sign you have fallen for the deception yourself because the higher you rise in the kingdom the more you know we are products of his mercy so while you stand there and watch the man of god ramble and make mistakes and quote wrong scriptures in the midst of it you what if you really look at jesus the holy spirit will start speaking to you and say truly there is this treasure in earthen vessels you say this man may not be so accurate yet he has been pastoring for 15 years and the members didn't leave him while you who has revelation is struggling to have 10 members and the god starts revealing to you you are now seeing jesus in that weak man that there is a grace upon this man one day in the midst of his confusion he would tell you t.l osborne came to lagos and he was part of those who were helping to hold his bag and t.l osborne touched his head you said that's where he got it pastor i know you don't preach well but i just found out you are carrying something i need touch me and the man said no are you who preach very well i was impressed said pastor you were impressed with my revelation but what i need now is what you carry there is no man of god that comes to my life that i cannot receive anything from no that's why i see some of our fathers i don't sit down and say oh revelation revelation there are places i travel to minister i already know that they may not have that level of word content but when it's time to pray i'm humble please reveal it to me many of us are about to lose it because if it is not a company of people who have your level of spiritual enlightenment they don't matter to you you will miss something because the greatest treasures you need will be hidden in that reverend that cannot speak english that reverend that is it one day god will tell you go for the capro missions program i say lord me me that i'm looking to be young what is capro how many will forest to go and win with soul when i can snap my finger i've learned the law of exemption and god says break your pride and follow them to that village you follow them to that village and you sit down and see a house reverend who has not been sick once for 22 years god will say this is why i brought you kneel down let him release something upon you before you carry your pride and be lying that you have not taken drugs for 30 years and die two weeks later out kneel down let that man give you something genuine let me tell you this one of the secrets of my spiritual growth is my open-heartedness towards the body not necessarily my perfection in pursuing god my open-heartedness that does not mean you jump at error no no when i discern grace i realize there is something this woman never built a house but she never went hungry she would tell you every pastor that rose up came and stayed in her house there is something you should receive there we are about losing that's why many of us do you know let me tell you one of the things with error once you stay in a dimension and don't open up to the body your area of strength will magnify and your area of lapse will become clear it will be clear that only your hands are growing but your head is remaining small it will be clear that you are growing in prosperity but your knowledge of god is diminishing it will be clear that you are growing in the miraculous but you don't have a heart for god by the grace of god i want to raise the balanced people that they can look at your life and see that the matters of life when they come to passion for god you are there prayer you are there not because i have all but i know how to bring all i travel somewhere and i see a man of god ah apostle you are the great man and your messages while he's saying that i'm observing lord what do i see this man has more character than me i may pray more than him but if we stand here and somebody is about to kill us i would deny christ and run but this guy will stay and die that means there is a grace for courage that i need our pastor is coming from adam our state i had the privilege they invited me i've been there three times now sir yes three times and when Boko Haram struck 2014 sir am I right and destroyed those people in Mubi it was that meeting that was like um, 
it was a starting point for the churches again while i preached and saw the way they honored me i asked myself a question i said with all this mouth i make if i was part of the pastors that stood before boko haram will i denounce christ don't be too fast say me uh -uh. now there are protocol people protecting you but there a pastor can go out in the morning and say wife if you don't see me just know that i died for christ that means there is a grace you say the man is not praying in tongues but you who is praying in tongues you run away at a sound on your zinc this guy is standing and watching a gun do you think it is normal no by faith abel offered it takes something to offer yourself now a wise man will meet that man of god and say sir you may not have the grace to preach and heal like me but i see that there is a dimension revealed to you if i stay where i am i will raise sons that can pray but never stand for christ i need that grace i admit i don't have it i admit that dimension has been opened up to you i humble myself sir it does not make you small this is what we will never do as men of god our pride will never allow us we will hide and listen to tapes in the secret Hi. and some of you are already learning those kinds of things you never see yourselves and celebrate yourself that guy is pastor femi pastor femi of where rema which which rema ah please i came into this town i'm a man of god already who is this pastor of where under who no if you don't change from this a generation will show that there was a lapse of god that we did not tap into don't ever let anybody say the prophetic is not useful just because you found the word of god don't call every prophet a reef raff and a roadside prophet there is a dimension only prophecy can birth no amount of study can bring you there there is a dimension only mental transformation can bring so don't insult Mel Mel mensa otabel and say oh these guys are just uh -uh. there is a dimension only joyce mayer can bring there is a dimension only benny Hinn can bring there is a dimension only dr lukoya can bring there is a dimension only papa kumui can bring you ignore Dr. Lukoya and demons kill you in your pride. <laughs> you die the death of a fool before your time. A man who was the best in molecular genetics and left it. Left something, went to school abroad. Exceptional in molecular genetics. And came and humbled himself to carry the cross. And all of a sudden you see him. And just say, what is all these things? We even mimic them in laughter and the demons say thank god for such a foolish generation are we together then you see a man of god papa Iya deboe can just stand i'm mentioning names because i'm saying positive things about them and because their fathers indeed may god bless you you're like i i need And you listen to td jakes and while he's moving keyboards are playing and moving and you just came out of seven days dry retreat like a skeleton almost dying i said what is this guy saying is it just to say you will come out that you can't say in one minute and while you are there in your pride slaves left africa and went to us god picks a man out of them and makes one of the best preachers you didn't ask how it happened when they traced his origin they found out he's Igbo, a nigerian are you learning who have you resented because of imbalance some of us right now we love god but we have been we have educated ourselves into believing that some people in the body are not relevant for our growth i'm telling you you are already in imbalance especially if you're a man of god if you are hearing me and you're in this mistake change now change quickly never go back home and put men of god and keep bringing them one by one. Oh, this one doesn't have fire this one he doesn't have this ah this one i like his suit i like this one i like his this be careful 
there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism there is something that joshua selman will never see even if i fast for 400 days it will not be covered by a demon it will be covered by god himself so that i will need a jimmy to see it there is something a jimmy will never see until he looks at a pastor toby or a pastor here in adamawa there was something about god i learned when i went to adamawa sir and I, I say it i have never seen a level of generosity from people like that women some of them old enough to be my mother and you see i'll say it till today when i go to movie they see me they start jumping daddy oh yo yo people with doctors lecturers with such depth of humility i don't know if i can do that for anybody and while they do those things i don't sit down with my pride and say wow you mean they acknowledge me this far i sit down and say lord let this grace for humility that will be upon a man of 50 years before i now die in the next 10 years because of pride do you see that god has put the remedy for our fall in the body but because we could not tap into it imbalance is a destroyer there are many families today that have no business being in poverty if they would listen to those carrying the graces it's amazing that what we resent is what we secretly desire oh i prophesy your name is divine ah man of god and so yeah oh, these riffraffs divine whereas one day he tried to he said what's your name are you gabriel said no i'm a jimmy and he said, ah. he said no he he wanted it secretly he was just too hot and then he said no what is not all about prophesying you must be careful most of the things people criticize they test it secretly when it becomes too hot they live as if nothing happened then they create a theology ah, ah. how can one person be praying for 12 hours life is not all about prayer that man has tried to pray secretly he, he thought it's just by energy the grace is not there so he sees someone fasting dry two weeks there's a man i know in abuja i don't know anybody that fasts on earth like him one day maybe when we are doing something in koinonia and he honors me a lot i'm sure i'll bring him one day to pray that man can go for um, no food no water not that you drink water in the night dry ah! if that man prays even standing close to him you will feel as if they are electrocuting you i literally mean it there is no deliverance case that gets to that man that goes back free Abba. before i no, i'm serious i really am serious that guy has stretched this body and brought it under subjection the kind of power that is in that man's voice yet he will come to me like this and still kneel down sometimes i'm tempted to say stand up oh you better stand up and lay hands on me How you know you love the body is your outspoken celebration of the uniqueness in it the moment you are ashamed to celebrate the uniqueness in the body is a sign that something about it is intimidating you oh a beautiful song look how wonderful this guy's voice was when he was singing i was just listening to his speech i said who oh, dash monkey banana let me try that thing I was in a Belkuta, my voice ceased just because it was raining. Yes, someone shouting. <laughs> Are we together? Now, don't forget, for those of you who know a little about me, I was once a music director. I'm not naive musically, but now I carry my pride and try what he's doing, and that's the end of it. There's no koinonia for one month. So I can choose to respond to my frustration by trivializing him and say it's not all about pitch the most important is the message no sir we need the pitch too otherwise recite a poem don't sing <laughs> it's not all about prosperity okay carry everything in your house and give to the poor the blogger who is talking is using an ipad that he bought two hundred and fifty thousand, and say it's not all about prosperity are we together 
it's not all about money and there is a hot meal in your kitchen waiting for you and there are poor people there it's not all about prayer yet you have intercessors in your church praying for you so you know prayer is important it's not all about fasting yet people are fasting for you it's not all about prophecy yet you call and say uh, promise just find out whether god is saying something around this i'm agreeing with you it's just that I, i'm not i had something i just want to i won't tell you because i is pride just say help me sir i'm trusting to hear something i'm a man of god too but there's there's this the vision is hazy i'm not seeing very well what is there does it mean you are not born again a hazy vision is something that happens to everybody jesus touched people many times Are we together? You must reject imbalance. The imbalance that comes in approaching the body. The imbalance in camping around a dimension as revealed to you. And ignoring the usefulness of what God has distributed in the body. You must sustain a fortitude tonight to embrace. There is something I've learned from our children that no adult can teach me. No matter how simple and well behaved you are. These children have taught something. They have taught me faith. They have taught me courage. Some of, do you know some of these little children are in prayer department? Am I right? Prayer department. They don't miss it. So if a child can be in a prayer department, what excuse does an adult have? Pray. You tell them, I'll buy you sweets. They won't forget. They come back and say, Uncle, my sweet. They never ask whether you have the money because they expect you to be adult enough to check whether you have money first before speaking now you learn that thing and when god says i know the thoughts i think towards you like a child you don't start asking lord where will the uncle come from no you stop learning when pride close your eyes may humility open it tonight so that you can see what is going on you see that's why many of us don't know what god is doing in the body we only knew what he was doing with us in our little corners and we get up and say revival is coming when it has started since because you were not there the virgins had oil but they could not go to the market there were others who had in abundance but the foolish virgins did not get more a time came their own finished they had their own oil but they would have gone to get some more the same way joshua selman has anointing but i need to get some more from benny Hinn. i need to get some more from kenneth copeland i need to get some more because the challenges in the future at this my level of anointing will eat me as if i'm not anointed so i will not allow the pride because of the level god has brought me now believe that i can stand benny Hinn's kind of challenge so i need the grace so i will listen when pastors come to me for counseling there's nothing that humbles me more than that and some of those people are anointed people dr luca and dr john sent me a text and they said apostle we are coming over and i said oh dear i love you when i was told i was told that since around 4 a.m or so this is the assistant chaplain he's also a man of god himself but he came here since around four to sit down what is there about a man the veil has been torn and it tears and you do you don't enter the veil has been torn you are still poor the veil has been torn you are still this whereas you can humble yourself and say every house is built by some man but god is the builder of it all there are people who must assist you in life otherwise you will never rise it's not pride One of the things that God helps me to do at the beginning of the year I go and our daddy escorts me to go and meet the pastors of CGC I go and greet them and get down on my knees with just a little I honor them and I get down on my knees and the pastor and his wife they speak and prophesy over me and lay hands over me I won't come and say see crowd no there is a grace if I were their age, I don't know if I would submit to a small boy like this. So Lord, help me before this pride that comes with middle belt and kill me. Where we don't have anything yet, we make a lot of noise. Lord, deliver me from it. 
so that I can look at one of these our little ones tomorrow and say apostle I saw myself lay hands on you and I said do it the girl is shaking I said I said do it and she lays hands and from that day you enter a dimension of revelation you can sit and say God forbid transfer it to another adult let me receive it from the adult and God says you will never get it that way are you blessed yes imbalance is dangerous is why we have not seen I remember years ago I tried to pray for a woman I think somewhere in Abuja also I can't remember I prayed for that woman I have never felt helpless before a sick body like that day you know how you pray and you know that there's no hope of that prayer being answered under that condition I couldn't feel any anointing the woman just stood there it saddened me I encouraged this woman koinonia no koinonia had not even started he was just about to start I said Lord how can a man be this helpless I came in your name bragged in your name if you see the scriptures I was quoting quoted this 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 the kingdom of God is not in word but in power and all that there was no power yet the Bible say in my name I did it it didn't work that meant I need to submit to somebody who has the eyes of the spirit to tell me what the Bible was saying because it's clear I did not get what Jesus was saying are we together and yet I watched Benny Hinn climb up the stage before he raised one worship song 40 wheelchairs 40 brothers and sisters this thing is not magic if you don't have it find it because it is there if it is not in your life it is not missing it only requires the humility to search you desire the prophetic and it's not in your life it is available it will take your humility to search man of God I've prayed but I know God has directed me but I do not know whether or not God is calling me to Kogi or Lafia and the moment you are talking the Lord just tells the person Lafia and he says the Lord is sending you to Lafia in one minute the word of the Lord came because of your humility to align instead of fasting for 100 days and you hear Lafia just when you round up the fast you hear a choir bomb and as soon as you round up the fast you hear just you see that whatever is a limitation to you we are going to pray please listen carefully whatever is a limitation to you the word limitation is relative everything you need is already resident within the body if your life is poor god did not make it so you ignore the grace that conveys that possibility if your prayer life is dead it is not God's will you have ignored the envoys that he has put that supply of the spirit upon if you do not have access to the deep things of God it is because pride has made you to take away the relevance the necessity of the Word of God I look at people and with all humility I know they have stopped growing they've not backslidden but they put a peg around their lives simply because they cannot open their door and say oh god bring in other dimensions that are not here they stood there and you know that's not their best that's not their greatest hallelujah praise the lord tonight is my prayer that god will deliver us from the error of imbalance that we will escape the danger of imbalance 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 that we will not trivialize the dimension of god that is required for our lives all dimensions cannot be in your life but all dimensions can work for you listen carefully all dimensions cannot be in your life it's impossible but all dimensions available can work for you meaning that it's impossible for me to be as prophetic as ever as apostolic as ever as evangelical as ever no there is the limitation that god puts 
I can't be Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland and Joyce Mayer and T.D. Jakes and Bishop Oyedepo and Papa Ie Adeboye at the same time with the same degree. No, sir. I have to be one of them. But I can enjoy what is on Bishop Oyedepo, Papa Adeboye, Benny Hinn. I can enjoy it through the humility of participation. It's the word koinonia. Sharing together. The ability to extend your hand through humility. To say, sir, I have seen the dimension of God's grace in your life and I'm open to let it work in my life. And honor becomes the key to that access. And all of a sudden you find out that what was a mountain to you is trivialized under a certain kind of grace. People have prayed for me in my life. I have been a product of many people's prayers. I have been surprised at how powerful the body of Christ is. I have prayed for people and sometimes I look at what they call a mountain and I am shocked because I know how easy that problem can be solved and in my mind sometimes I wonder where, where were you why did you allow it to get this bad before locating the body for help are we together there is something tonight that you need in God for you to move to the next level that is not yet in your life but it is available and for many of us the error of imbalance has made you to think that because your life cannot produce it it cannot be produced so you just say if it was for me God would have brought it directly through me and just because it didn't come directly through me then it's not important please hear me prosperity is as important as healing healing is as important as prayer prayer is as important as visions are we together salvation is as important as mental transformation mental transformation is as important as your health and hygiene stay in your area of calling but do not allow imbalance make you trivialize what god is doing God is not only walking in Koinonia. Brothers and sisters, God is walking across Zaria. God is walking across the north. God is walking across Africa. It is only a privilege for us to be at the level that we are now in his program. It's a privilege for us to be contributors. That's the word. Contributors. That you can come and listen to the supply of the dimension that God has put in me. Of course, administratively speaking, it is it is important for you to be able to stay in your area of whatever ministry or whatever church you are part of for the purpose of administration and leadership however let me tell you the truth any man that indoctrinates you into camping around him alone and all the dimension revealed to him whether in the name of mentorship or fatherhood has deceived you if I am your spiritual father it means you have taken you have come under my authority but it does not mean that i represent all of christ to you i represent the voice and the speakings of god in your life but i must have the flexibility to allow you grow and this is my goal god knows i get materials that have nothing to do with me i send it to people in the ministry listen listen to it this will bless you it blessed me so much Are we blessed? We are going to pray. Father, my, my father would have prospered if only he listened to that prosperity preacher. He said prosperity preachers are rubbish. Now my father is an evangelist who has lost his house, although a preacher of the gospel. Lord, my arrogant business partner father would have been such a man of prayer and he would have seen that accident before it happened but he ignored it because he thought everything was money and he neglected the place of prayer and evil came sat in our house and there was no eyes to see and nobody to manipulate things from the realm of the spirit and we died that death was not caused by god the refusal to tap from what god is doing close your eyes until there was destruction there's nobody to help me in school no 
if only you listen to the person that god used to say go to this church you would have found somebody who would have sponsored you it is your refusal because you never believe that there are people kind enough to sponsor you without strings attached and your imbalance did not allow you to tap into that dimension tonight i want us to start with a prayer of repentance lord forgive me for trivializing your other dimensions scattered across the body thank you for what you have shown me as a man of god lord forgive me for insulting business people forgive me for calling prosperous people wasters of your time lord i forgive me for calling prayer warriors hungry noise makers forgive me for insulting deliverance forgive me for insulting the prophetic i ask for mercy for insulting people who transform the mind in the place of prayer forgive me for thinking those who are the the personal development experts are useless to your agenda forgive my ignorance that has come through imbalance this imbalance has cheated me and my life has lost the flavor that should be go ahead and pray the reason why I am not blessing all things is because imbalance has pegged a dimension of God from my life if I opened up myself to the healing ministry I would have carried that healing anointing my church would have been a church that experienced his healing I rejected the prophetic and now confusion is destroying my life Lord I ask for mercy I've exaggerated the prophetic and I've left the word of God now I've gotten into witchcraft and error I've become a slave to prophets have mercy on me and let me return back to the word I've been so obsessed with power and signs and wonders that there is no place for spiritual growth being grounded and established in the word of God all I look for now is power Lord have mercy take away that imbalance from my life outside make sure you are praying everywhere pray the error the danger the destructive calamity that imbalance brings Lord I've ignored the anointing and all I do is just an empty theological Bible study without the power without grace so my church my business my family has no genuine anointing Lord, I open up myself to the dimension of authentic power. Lord, I rejected excellence. I thought it was just about prayer and Bible study and healing the sick. I rejected excellence. Now all my TV programs are not accepted because they don't match a level of excellence. I have wasted resources because of lack of excellence. There are certain partners and helpers that excellence would have drawn to my ministry but lack of excellence threw, threw them away I received that dimension pray hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray there is not maybe not in koinonia but I observe the body of Christ and I see a widespread of prayerlessness people don't pray again pray for me that's the language of people oh you are going for please pray for us so and people don't pray you know why because in a bid to balance this we have insulted every prayer warrior insulted anyone any church that prays these are just noise makers it's all about money and we have found out that there is no sensitivity in the body no discernment people don't pray people don't travel gone are the days when you see people lock themselves somewhere and cry to the god of heaven now people fast and all they just want cheap things oh man of god let me sow a seed just touch my head there are some things it's not just by impartation you must stay and cry upon the horns of the altar till something falls upon you from heaven we are going to pray one prayer and say lord what dimension is needed for my next level open me up unto it oh god lift your voice and pray lord if it is the prophetic that will take me to my next season then i open up my spirit for it if it's the miraculous 
that will take me to the next dimension if it's a healthy mental transformed mind lord i receive that dimension i will pray in please if it's a restoration of fire upon my altar that is the requirement for the next dimension i receive it if it's the knowledge of administration and excellence that i need lord balance my life lord balance my life balance my church balance my business balance my understanding balance my life balance my life take away from me the sarcasm for prophets take away the sarcasm for bible study take away the sarcasm for prayer take away the sarcasm for diligence and lord let me incorporate these dimensions as coming from you hallelujah listen to me we're rounding up there are very anointed people very anointed people who don't know how to speak before great men because to them every gathering of people is a church service and then god sends you now to your destiny helper and you don't know how to speak and they throw you away back to the prison although you can interpret dreams you didn't understand the protocol of seeing pharaoh because you ignore the person who can teach you how to communicate so you find out that the ministries never cross nigeria because no other region can accept you you have not been trained to understand global leadership and you don't know how to synergize spirituality with people's culture you travel to another person's culture they jail you as a man of god because you do not understand the terms there are other ministries that the revelation god is giving them should go to the whole earth but your resentment for wealth has kept you poor and so nobody can hear your voice no tapes no books no nothing because prosperity that will give it wings is not there i can look at a congregation and tell in a split second the dimension they are ignoring because i see prayer warriors who the the oldest person there may be 60 years no car no house no school fees the moment they are driving children from school fees is all is all the prayer warriors children that return back home because they have ignored it now let me tell you something about imbalance your imbalance makes you represent misrepresent god to your territory because they are depending unbelievers are depending on the idea you give them about god make sure you give them a balanced perception don't present to them a god who empowers people and removes prosperity don't present to them a God who all that he does is to give them money and their spiritual lives. They are not saved. They are not born again. They are going to hell, but they have money. That's a misrepresentation. Don't present to them a man of God that is anointed, anointed, and there's no room to teach the word. So you have a congregation of members that never grow. You have occultists in churches and they never, never grow. They don't understand the principles they destroy their homes half of a church is divorced with people because the teaching ministry there is no teaching priest there is power but there is no wisdom to share the ministry that keeps homes together are we together or you can have a crowd of people who never pray the prayer warrior in that whole church prays only for one hour because that dimension has been ignored we're going to pray one last prayer balance my life balance my life lift your voice and cry balance my life lord i receive leadership lord i receive prayer lord i see i receive wisdom through the word lord i receive favor lord i receive excellence lord i receive the warfare dimension i receive the prophetic I receive the deliverance dimension of the world. Every provision that the grace of God affords, even if it is not working in my life, I am open-minded towards the body. No criticism and no resentment. 
I repent from criticizing any and every man of God regardless of the limitations I open myself to the multifaceted dimensions of God resident within his ecclesia I receive the dimension that brings speed I receive the dimension that brings establishment I receive the dimension that brings glory I receive the dimension that brings increase I receive are you praying Lord until now I have not seen the need to be filled with the Holy Ghost I thought it was just something for Pentecostals but right now I open my spirit to receive it's a dimension needed in my life in your name we will rise I don't know you reign in your name we will rise I don't know you reign hallelujah let me add one more prayer Lord put a dimension of love for the body in me love love when there is no love criticism will remain when there is no love sarcasm and resentment will remain open your mouth and cry love for the body love for every church love for every man of God regardless of their dimensions regardless of their limitations regardless of their imperfections lord we embrace them we love them if they are part of the body they are the beloved lift your voice no longer will i resent any man of god no longer will i resent any church no longer will i resent any fellowship any gathering of believers my propositions against them may be legitimate but it still is not enough reason even if you are not part of them wish them well even if you are not part of that church wish them well even if you are not part of that prayer group wish them well even if you are not part of that christian organization wish them well you are not part of the mission agents wish them well talk well about them talk well about their leaders Hallelujah. Let me pray a prayer for you. From the depth of my heart, I want to pray for you. Listen, I have gotten more results in my life from loving the body than from praying. Believe me, I have gotten more results in my life just from loving the body than I have from my prayer life. There are things I have not prayed for. The love for the body brought it to me. There are dimensions that my love, I love the body of Christ. There is no way I have not ministered and there is no way I will not minister. There is no way I will see a man of God and have to turn and leave him and say, oh, you are from this. No. I have many friends today, great people. We don't believe many things. We don't agree in many things. Yet it is still too small a reason. You don't have to agree with people to love them. You must agree to work together. But you can disagree and still love them. You believe in tongues. I don't believe in tongues. No problem. You pray your tongues. We can't work together. But I can love you. You believe in finances. I don't believe in finance. No problem. I sit with my broke life. After all, Lazarus and Abraham, they all went to heaven. So you can sit the way you want and shortchange yourself. You believe in finance, you don't believe in prayer, okay, fine. I, I can, but this hatred, do you believe in finance? No, go. Do you believe in prayer? No. Do you believe in wearing trousers? No, go. Do you believe in tying your hair? No, go. Do you believe in praying, shouting? No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't ever be part of that nonsense. You will think it's a good thing until you watch yourself destroy yourself. Are we together? Listen. 
when you come to my house i have a modus operandi i have a system in my own house because it is my house but when i go to your house even if i see what is not permissible in my house in your house i must sustain a system of accommodation there is a way we do service here in koinonia you don't accept someone is under the anointing you don't see somebody just run and come and fall down here he may kneel down may lie down there but you don't find that there are churches you go to that during praise and worship the man of god is jumping another member outside will come and be jumping with the man of god and they are sweating don't just see that and say god forbid what is going on here be careful in the midst of the lampstand christ is still there are we together you don't come and then you see a woman just because she's not wearing earrings she's standing and I see all these people we have moved past this level and you just say who is this woman humble yourself and sit down and say lord let this woman speak to me you don't come and just because you see a woman maybe not covering her hair or whatever preserve your perspective as revealed to you by god but you must give allowance for the diversity of the body there are things i believe it will never change no matter where i go to there are convictions are we together but i'm able to open up myself and when i go to certain regions i make sure that i go through the sacrifice of aligning to their understanding there are places i cannot fly a shirt like this to go and minister not because it is wrong the context of their understanding will not allow them to receive of the grace of god upon my life there are even some that i cannot even wear suit because once your suit is excessively clean and flashy that in itself may not even suggest that you are serious spiritually so i can decide to just wear something that is plain even traditionals i may not even wear something with many colors is the sacrifice so that there will be minimal distraction so they can receive it's called love for the body when you love the body there is no sacrifice that is too great if you are going to a church and they say to enter this church cover your head no i won't do this god no. carry your wrapper cover your head and enter and see jesus and let jesus minister to you and you go back when you do this you will see how your life will begin to grow because when the prophetess is coming and she's on trouser i don't say oh this is no what are you saying when the woman is coming and she doesn't have any earring when the man is coming and all of a sudden you see him looking poor and wretched you don't say all oh, this poor man what do you have to tell me when we do this then the lapses in our lives will be closed and we will see a new church that is rising complete perfected by the diversities of the body therefore i pray for you in the name of jesus the grace to receive the multifaceted dimensions of God released through the body I release it upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you that the grace to be and remain unresentful towards the body unresentful towards any and every church receive that grace I cast away from your life the spirit of cynicism and criticism based on differences that you do not appreciate i command that spirit to live your life forever i plant in you the fortitude to accommodate dimensions that are inconveniencing to you in the name of jesus christ the grace to overlook the weaknesses and the limitations in the body so as to receive the grace upon her receive it in jesus name the grace to sacrifice your convenience so as to find a dimension of christ resident within certain inconveniencing spheres i release that grace upon you now in the name of jesus christ every dimension of god that should be working in your life and is deficient in the name of jesus christ i pray that by the mercy of god may he navigate that dimension back to your life in the name of jesus christ i pray for the spirit of humility that the pride that makes you see or think that any other person who is not you is not needed in your spiritual growth process i take away that pride forever 
in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you from tonight. May you begin to execute an uncanny level of spiritual balance. Balance in the communication of the word of God. Balance in the dispensing of the anointing. Balance in your prosperity work. Balance in administration and excellence. Balance in character. Balance in wisdom and mental transformation. Balance in your passion for soul and souls and the evangelical dimension. Balance in the prophetic. Balance in your understanding of Christ. Balance in your understanding of Satan. Balance in your understanding of every dimension of your work with God. There is a spirit that can influence your life and bad luck follows you. You become a magnet. You never magnetize anything good. If car is to jam people, you are the one it will jam. If police is to gather some people as suspects, it's just when they are catching people, you just come in. They say, follow them. You say, no, 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 no. I attend Koinonia. They say, go and explain in the police station. Now, you may laugh about it. You may laugh about it. Every bad thing happens to you. Everyone laughs in the class, but the lecturer will ask you to stand up and say, why did you laugh? As if you are the only person and you were at the back. Listen, that lecturer himself may be a victim to a spirit. He's joining your heads together. And so by coming to his office, you now say, you, I, I don't you smile. What is your name? Now you are entered another level of, of trouble. humans victims to spirits that's what is happening in the earth i feel very sad when i see people they get up and they get up in the morning and they do not know listen they do not know that your body is only an instrument of execution there is a spirit that is driving you when you see favor coming to a man no there is a spirit that makes it happen there is an operation there is an anointing are you getting me now you can just be sitting down and then god will speak to you carry ten thousand naira and give a marker why didn't god say somebody should give to you there is something it's not just that okay god has spit no 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 if you understand this you will know how easy it is to walk in victory you don't focus on this physical body you focus on what spirit and what atmosphere influences it because that's what determines the possibilities there are people who almost never pay for anything when you are going to buy something that's when somebody comes and says do you know i was thinking about you this morning and you tell the person i'm not surprised because the activity of the holy spirit manifesting as different things favor the blessing whatever it is orchestrate events together for you are you getting what i'm saying now as a pastor the day the anointing is strong upon your life that's the day everybody who can help you will not come for the program you stand and preach your life out and everybody say kai we have seen what what god is doing through you and uh, as a family, we really appreciate. Uh, by God's grace, next convention will not forget you, I assure you. And you stand up and go. But someone else, the day he's coming, somebody is about to travel and mysteriously his car may spoil and he'll say, let me attend this program. And he comes and says, God has been asking me to sow into a man. This preacher is that man. You think it just happens? The only thing that grows in a farm without being planted is called what? Everything of worth is planted. Are you getting what I'm saying? Favor does not just come. A ministry does not just grow. Anointing doesn't just come. Revelation doesn't just come. Honor doesn't just come. A man doesn't just become sick. A man doesn't just become healed. Was it not in your Bible? Listen. That the trouble around Daniel's life was the spirit of the Medes and the Persians. Is that not true? It was happening physically through human beings. But it was a spirit. Because it was under the influence 
of the, the, the Medes and the Persians. It was a spirit that made men to serve idols. And now a man came called Daniel and he was praying. And his prayer was judging those spirits. And so they could not influence the king. And he made the king like Daniel. Are you getting me now? And the king's liking Daniel made him to subscribe to the God of Daniel. And those spirits said, no, we have to find a way of bringing enmity between the king and Daniel. So one day you get up and somebody comes. You, you thought a neighbor just entered your house and jammed your head. You and your destiny helper and left. It's not just that a neighbor came. A spirit visited your compound using human vessels. Jammed the head of two people and left all of you together. Are you getting what I'm saying now? A husband and a wife. Lovely people. Romeo and Juliet. The marriage is going well. All of a sudden a spirit lands in that house. And then something happens. A woman who has been minding her business. All of a sudden she looks at a text. And doesn't see it properly. And she thinks that she saw I love you to another woman. She carries it and lands the phone on the man's head. Only to find out that it was maybe to their daughter or a spiritual daughter or something and now enmity starts and a lot of people sit down and say you see uh, just love yourself just manage like that wait and see the part two of that movie the holy spirit i mean the, the demon spirit will come again into the house something will happen that demon spirit will start making that man to fail in his job are you getting the point now he will return back home with the anger of his job that spirit the same spirit will start making the woman angry and be impatient so her impatience is jamming with his failure in the office what does it produce divorce that's the name at the end of it the apostle and the prophet that should rise from that family no longer has parents and the boy who would have loved church who would have been faithful in church is now forced to follow bad gangs you just thought it was a physical acting the body without a spirit is dead every time you see things around your life not working the way god orchestrated don't sit down and discuss get into the place of prayer immediately there is war happening in the heavenlies. There is a clash of spirits. They are claiming your body. Listen. Do you know that when Moses died, watch this. When Michael came to carry the body of Moses, he found Satan too. Satan wanted to use the body of Moses, enter it and resurrect as Moses. Are you getting the point now? Resurrect as Moses and start bringing error to people. And he needed the body desperately. And Michael said, no, no, no. I'm not going to drag with you. The Lord rebuked you. How many people saw your mother in a dream? A spirit carried the face of your innocent mother. Landed it in the dream of her enemy. And she got up and said, I knew it. I knew it. Joshua Selman's mother is a witch. This one, I saw it. The woman came with a knife. How many of our mothers and fathers have been called witches and wizards? And, and this is what many prophets see. And because they do not have discernment. Are you getting the point now? They now say, I saw who some, this and that and that and that. Is it not in your Bible? When a, a, a diviner invokes the supposed spirit of Samuel to prophesy. I refuse any other spirit from influencing my life. I, I, I don't have time for that. I cannot be a victim for the, the failure that is orchestrated. Look at Job. One more scripture to prove this to you. Job, a man who loved God and eschewed evil. But the Bible says a meeting happened between spirits in the heavens. Job was not there. Oh. A man just gets up in the morning and they have concluded a meeting about you. Your children are on the way. Thunder strikes them. You just finished furnishing your house. Thunder strikes it. Your cattle die mysteriously. Notice, 
all the deaths that happened there was one one people left to come and testify is that a testimony job i'm the only one who is alive this is what happened and then the meeting was held again and he said let's touch his body ah. so a meeting can happen watch this let's destroy this family and they conclude it you snore your way through the morning wake up and that's the last time you know peace in a long time you are a victim your body is only a victim tonight this is the this is the theme of this miracle service let me tell you when these spirits clear out of the way you will be shocked to see the doors that will open for you all of a sudden you who nobody would call you you will receive a call the last time you spoke with that person was five years he did just call you the holy ghost made it happen because there was a spirit that was stopping that call every time they want to think about you a distraction happens and you remain in that suffering and when you come to us men of god we say it's okay don't worry things will change one day go better that, 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 no, no 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 that's why i told you you must insist tonight you must insist you are mighty on your throne two things there are three things that give demon spirits access to people and families i want you to pay attention to what i'm saying three things number one covenants 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 you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne oh sing Oh, fountains of the deep, Hadosh, Hadosh, you are mighty on your throne. America as a nation, listen, a man can wear the inner wares of a woman, watch this, and be moving on the street, and that man returns back and blessings keep following him a very stupid man but good things are happening in his life let me tell you why it's because of the covenant of the fathers there were people who signed an agreement and said lord we give this nation to you anyone who comes under the umbrella of this nation is authorized to walk in that blessing and so a woman a man can go for plastic surgery to become a woman and yet come out alive in nigeria you try to even just operate somebody's ear and he would die was it the knife that killed him at the doctor so daft let me tell you what our forefathers left with us ready this is what they left they went to mountains valleys regions listen and all kinds of ancestry we can fake it and pretend listen i'm a new creation person i've read the pauline epistles are you getting what i'm saying i understand the grace of god and the new creation realities very well but i know god and i understand his ways are you following me now please come two people very quickly so that i need to no no sit down pastor for me I promise you can come come stand here stand here watch this in my example this guy is a thief this guy is a wrong occupant watch this if this is my handkerchief and ken comes to quickly steal it the moment he hears this my footsteps what will he do he will run away because he's a what thief but if somebody comes and meets promise and say promise give me 10 naira i will give you this handkerchief and promise gives him 10 naira and he gave him the handkerchief is there a contract there is there a covenant there if he sees me coming will he refuse because you see the realm of the spirit is a legal realm are you getting what i'm saying now so our forefathers went to idols and they said protect our wives make the plants bring crops for us 
in response we will hold festivals every time in response we will donate children to you in response they, it was not their fault they did it because christianity had not come to nigeria now watch this when samuel ajayi crowder and many other christians came they brought the gospel of salvation not the mysteries of the kingdom are you getting me they brought the gospel and we salute them but that was not enough the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom that would bring liberty was not taught so even they themselves died i traveled to we were in gombe one time gombe state and we we're going to yerima's village to go and greet his family and on our way there there was a rock like a cap and they were telling us a story there that the people used to live there that that rock used to open physically there was an invocation that would be made on it and it would open and people would enter inside the rock and hide during times of war and this is what they said the last person to enter you are the one that is donated to that rock the last person to come out you are also donated to the rock are we together now and that rock has been faithful has been what the same way our forefathers had bumper harvest even where there was no rain mysteriously the crops grew these spirits kept their part of the contract all of a sudden some missionaries just found themselves into the village and they said we brought good news and they died in three days the spirit killed them immediately and said you are joking good news of what and then a few people received it and then when they received it they convinced themselves that because they are born again the territory was now changed i watched a documentary brothers and sisters in fiji island fiji island is an island small island but they love god now something happened there were missionaries who came to that place and they so beat the missionaries and oppressed them before the missionaries died they cursed the land they cursed the land and the people and they died and the people thought it did not matter one by one the fish in the river disappeared mysteriously when hunger hit the people from the government down they said something is wrong and god began to reveal to the church around here that look there are there are apostolic activities that must happen in this land if the territory must be cleansed this is what they did they began to pray and then supernaturally they found the grandchildren of the missionaries listen to me they brought the grandchildren of the missionaries to the city they loved them and the children blessed the land and say we release you from the cause of our fathers it's, it's a documentary in less than one week they saw fish crops started growing fiji island changed at once there are so many families that are seated part of the terms of the contract is that if you don't bow down to that idol you will never build a house you will never marry contract sealed now you came that you are born again and you are moving around 35 37 no marriage the other one too is coming when you meet pastors they say no problem are you not born again just believe marriage is going the ones that get married no children mysteriously you are seeing the same patterns happen because covenants are powerful that was the very same principle jesus used to redeem man covenants covenants are you getting what i'm saying now covenants are powerful until they are broken the spirits the custodian of those covenants are authorized to still begin to execute the terms on the of the covenant even on the victims please believe what i'm saying i prayed for too many people i've ministered to too many people i'm not telling you stories i'm telling you what i was free from number two ignorance ignorance authorizes demon spirits to buffet people psalm 82 verse 5 bless you guys thank you they know not neither will they understand they grow up in darkness confusion ignorance 
and as a result the earth is out of course what have i not said verse six ye are god and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes the bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge ignorance ignorance of the mysteries of the kingdom ignorance of the principles of the kingdom ignorance of the keys to true liberty in the spirit number three disobedience personal disobedience deuteronomy when you read i think chapter 28 or so it shall come to pass it says if thou shalt diligently hearken to these things to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all nations and the blessing shall come upon you and overtake you is tied to your obedience the bible says having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is perfected when it is complete disobedience authorizes the devil to buffet our lives don't let anybody lie to you that when you disobey god nothing happens no it's not about god doing it it's about the laws in the spirit they will not change they didn't start with the old testament those laws predate our dispensation are we together now so tonight i want you to look at your life very carefully especially for those of us who have come have you not seen traces of the influence of darkness in one area or the other that does not mean you are not born again that does not mean you are not serious with god but it's time tonight on behalf of you and your family members to rise up and say no way i come by the blood i come to challenge these things there are many of us who have never received a testimony of any good thing that anybody has done in your life somebody buys a recharge card to give you it disappears physically that's that's the extent to which this thing is working against you have you seen people like that a guy tells a lady i love you car will jam him two hours later just for trying to verbalize that i'm considering marrying you car jams him his friend now comes and says Tor, since my friend has come me too i love you something happens let me tell you the meaning of that it puts a stigma on you and your family are you getting me now and they say these people there is death have you not seen lands that people bought land to build house why do you think we dedicate properties why do you think we pour oil on land i know a man who bought a property and went there to stroll in the night and received a slap in the in the in the land true true story because the spirit there does not care whether you paid for it gave him a slap when listen when i was in secondary school we were in a temporal site before they moved us to the, pam the permanent site that temporal site used to be a hospital are you getting the point where the place that was like the mortuary was part of the place that was converted to our kitchen i tell you many students had encounters with strange beings you are entering to ease yourself and you will just hear sounds sounds that can give you a headache for a long time i remember our school getting ultimate power so that we we'll watch as their own strategy to deliver us from this this nonsense many students were initiated into occultism because of that but tonight we come in the name of the lord the captain of the army that this situation in your life must end I sat back there fighting tears when all the people were sharing their testimonies a testimony is simply what happens when the Holy Spirit becomes the only influence in a man's life any other spirit must create problems tonight daddy mommy sisters and brothers there is need to deal with certain things in our lives I saw poverty in my family as if we offended God coming from a pastor's family 
didn't change my family background your name can be Solomon you will remain poor until what needs to be addressed That's why I told you tonight will be a night of massive deliverance. Listen, as we begin to pray, many of you who are sick will all of a sudden turn and find out that the sickness has gone. Really, when you understand this, you will know what a miracle is. A miracle is what happens when the spirit that is causing that ailment departs. This is what Jesus did to the woman who was bound. He looked at her in the spirit and he saw that a spirit had tied her for 18 years. And he said, woman, thou art loose loose he didn't say thou art healed he said thou art loose the moment the spirit left he laid hands on her and straightened the physical body and there she went remember that madman at gathering that was an evangelist in a cave tearing himself into pieces the moment the spirit heard that jesus was coming they were waiting for him at the other side hallelujah Mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. I'll never forget one time I was praying, praying seriously. I was in the spirit and I had a vision. I saw that there is a tree that is close to where I stay, and I didn't see that tree again. I just saw a great beast, like like a like a being. The tail was a snake, the eyes were big like human head. Imagine this head now, like an eye, two of them, one here, one here. And the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger and all he told me is so you think you can bring God's people into prosperity and then it left that was it mighty on your throne mighty on your throne that's the reason why every time Satan wants to destroy you the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person so your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me and satan will say amen let's go and then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say help me tonight we are going to cry to the king of kings i don't know if you came for this miracle service especially for those who are family people here you should never go back the same you see the results of people 4.8 five points they have always had that ability even when they were getting one point it's a spirit that makes that happen don't let anyone fool you you are not so daft human beings were created intelligent when you enter an exam hall and you write nonsense and come out with zero and smile and say it's just because i didn't read well is that really true how many of you watch film twice to explain it you sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife and that was you didn't read for it yet you spent six months or five months reading for one course and then at the end of it you come and fail it and get nonsense and you keep convincing yourself it's just that i didn't get it it is the reason why you can read a novel of 1000 pages but a lifetime you can't read half of the bible because there is a spirit stopping you if this was a novel some of us would say take this i will bring it for you next week friday and you will exhaust it but from the day you were born the day you were born till today you have not read up to one third of the bible one time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward you started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance after you read it you now threw it away because you cannot help yourself in the flesh it takes the anointing of the spirit that's why he sends carpenters that's why he puts miracle services like this so that you can come under the influence of god's power how about genotype issues ss you get up and find out you are ss or as do you know the bible never mentions the issue of ss or as are you aware of that that thing was a technology that was fabricated by satan to stop people from getting married you see a beautiful lady 
who has a prophet in a womb to come and then one spirit just brings one one demonic report called ss and they say sorry we can't join you because you are going to kill your children for that devil is a liar in this place tonight i'm challenging you because when we rise we are going to pray the miracles will start as we pray you've got to be angry with yourself and say no enough is enough enough is enough we are come to mount zion where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me yeah. your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me sing it two more times with faith in your heart same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me Rescue the earth lives in me, lives in me. Jump up on your feet and we sing it one more time. Say, and conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Listen. Deliverance, therefore, is a separation. Is the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences the spirits that attempt to influence your life the legal separation brothers and sisters when that happens to you then you will see gates open by themselves when that happens to you you will see realms of favor all these things people pray on you must challenge those spirits you must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family and god is ready for us tonight i tell you god is ready for us tonight lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word the body without a spirit is dead the body without a spirit is dead now i realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life lift your voice and thank him for this revelation lord i now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family oh. 
Are you praying tonight? Let the dissatisfaction rise from you. Oh, come on, tonight is your night of liberty. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Just the voices. Sing it from your heart. Same power. That conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. The power that can challenge any altar, the power that can challenge any force of witchcraft, any generational cause. One more time, sing it. That conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Lives in me, lives in me. Same power, same power that conquered the grave. Lives in me, lives in me. Your love, your love, say your love. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it. Say it must stop tonight. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Koinonia, you should be praying. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. Behind failures, challenge the spirit. Behind marital delays, challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. The spirit, the body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? The key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing. For a body without a spirit is dead. Any cause without a spirit backing it is dead. It's null and voice. Any pronouncement, any enchantment without a spirit is dead. Therefore, I want you to lift your voice. And I want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are 
to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions pray Oh yes, he must leave you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you to walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will they will bring you into error so that everything you see misleads you into trouble i'd like you to lift your voice again just do what i'm asking you to do from the realm of the heavens challenge powers challenge forces over your finances Oh, it must change. It must change. It must change. It must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire. That's all I see. Fire. You will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen. This one is the one that will bring your miracle. Listen. As this prayer goes on, miracles will start immediately. Many of you will start getting reports from your body. Many of you will be open to visions. Right now, lift your hands. Hallelujah. My goodness, there is such a heavy unction on me. It's for deliverance tonight. It must give way for you to move forward. At the count of three, hear me. Listen, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice is a prophetic instruction. As you shout it, fire some of you visions your eyes will be open in the spirit you will see covens catching fire Matalabata, father you told me tonight is a night of deliverance there are families under bondage there are businesses under bondage enough is enough let your fire bring deliverance 
Are you ready now? At the count of three, may heaven invade this place. One, two, three. Second Saturday, I command covens. I command altars. I command spirits. Kaporotose. Bring them out. Fire! 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 Bring the deliverance tonight! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The Holy Ghost is showing me a vision. We are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison, physical poison. As you shout, physically it will come out. Lift your voice. Bata bata. Shaka ta ta ta. Mare tende tepa. Father, anything that has been planted in the body of anyone right now, as you shout, Jesus, we have victim. One, two, three. He must let you go. He must let you go. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. My goodness, fire is burning in this place. Fire is burning in this place. Fire is burning in this place. The devil must let you go. The devil must let you go. The devil must let you go. The Lord is giving me a word right now. There are ladies here. There is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you, to sleep with you right now. Lord, where are they? Let that fire, let that fire bring deliverance right now, right now, right now, right now. Every spirit husband, every manifestation, every spirit wife, every devil that has leads to you, it leaves you now, now, right now. He must leave you now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. You see physical snakes. Where is that lady? Physically, physically. It appears to you. Physically. The lady is right here. Please come out. I don't know who that lady is. Physical snake. It appears to you. You see it. Let me tell you something. After this miracle service, you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you. That's when you will know that Satan is not as powerful as he looks. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers, I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I am a, I'm a new creation, no longer connected to ancestry. Lift your voice and pray. Every altar that connects me to my fathers, Every witchcraft that attempts to connect me. No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Oh, 
Hallelujah. We pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now. Right now. And make your way to the front. I see someone having severe pain. Your thigh. Right under here, your thigh. There is severe pain. Severe pain. The Lord is healing that person right now. Please check yourself and make your way to the front. Right now. Check yourself. Make your way to the front. I'm seeing two ladies. You came here with heaviness. There is heaviness on your chest. It's just like something heavy. God is healing people. Can you appreciate Jesus? Hallelujah. There are miracles happening. Make your way to the front now. We'll give you room to testify. Stand here. All the people that are coming out for miracles, just stand here. Right now, there are miracles that are happening. I see someone like your nose. It's like there is an irritation in your nose. While we were praying, you felt like there was fire on it. And now it's lifted. Now it's lifted completely. It's gone right now. Right now. Right now. I'm seeing someone. Severe peptic ulcer. It hooks you. Hooks you very seriously. As we started praying, it just disappeared. Who is that? Make your way to the front right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. I see a lady you hear a voice telling you you will die not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if i don't call anybody's case i'm going to pray for the sick i'm calling miracles cases that have happened help me um aaron would you help me just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies god is giving people miracles miracles right now miracles right now miracles are happening right now i'm seeing somebody listen there is a growth you came here with the growth at the back of your neck check it now it has disappeared check it now now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness god is doing miracles in this place There are miracles that are happening. Miracles that are happening. I saw this same case in Kaduna this morning. Now, I'm seeing four people. Four people. There is one guy and three ladies. You have pile. Pile. For one of the ladies, when you go to ease yourself, it's as if you are giving birth. Blood comes out. Go and check yourself now. you find out that that pile is gone. Gone back to the devil. Go and check it, please please we are not playing games don't sit back confirm your miracle and seal it i know there is a guy i saw a guy pile severe pile hallelujah the lord is showing me a lady tears just start coming out of your eyes without any you are not crying but it just starts coming out it's very embarrassing it starts coming out right now the lord is healing you wherever you are confirm it and make your way to the front right now confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now right now confirm it and make your way to the front we'll give all of them room to testify god is healing people right now i'm seeing someone with this finger look at me this finger this very finger that's what the lord is showing me there is a miracle happening on that finger this very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel gabriel 
Gabriel. Who is Gabriel? Gabriel. Gabriel. The Lord is bringing a, a miracle for Gabriel. Gabriel. I've been fighting this name, but let me bring it out. I'm hearing a name, Asabe. I don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family. Asabe. Asabe, I'm hearing that name. Who is Asabe? Please confirm. Make sure you confirm it. Let's not. Huh? You are Asabe? Uh, but I'm seeing another person again. No. Eh? This, you are Asabe. Please stand here. Miracles everywhere. Come, tell us. Very quickly, come, come. Please help us. Give Aaron. Let's, let's coordinate them. Okay, come, sir. Let's just listen to this. Give them the mic, Lawrence. Just testify. Tell us. Look at the crowd. Straight to the point. What happened to you? What is the miracle? Praise the Lord. I am the girl who the man of God prophesied. I have an irritation in my nose since 2012. 2012. Yes. And now what happened? Every day, once I put my hand, I, I always notice blood coming out. But now, I felt something drop out of my nose. That devil leaves you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Give Jesus praise. God is doing miracles here. All kinds of miracles are happening in this place. Please, the next people. Let's have them come very quickly. Just turn and let's testify. Don't look at me. Look at the crowd. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I have this bonus While we are confession. talking, there is a lady who will come strongly under the anointing outside. Please pick that lady and bring her. As we are talking, the power of God is, in fact, two ladies. Two ladies outside, mightily by the anointing. Please pick them and bring them. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. On my left thigh, I have this burning sensation. I don't even know what cause, but I know that once it starts, it burns me as if I'm sitting on fire. Okay. But now it's gone. And since last hearing this voice saying i will die even when i was coming last week i had this fear that i was going to but right now gone. completely gone give jesus praise god bless you yes please check yourself if you see a miracle you can come out we are going to pray for the sick but we want to take testimonies we'll give you an opportunity to tell us what god is doing mama please stand up please don't let mama sit down for god's sake give her a chair mama should not be kneeling down praise the yes Lord. please sometimes i normally feel pains in my chest Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest, but now I feel very... Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any pain? Is there any pain? Is there any pain? Give Jesus praise. Yes, please. Praise God. While he was preaching, I was having peptic ulcer. So peptic ulcer. Out, but while we started praying, it left me. And There's I one more outside. Go and carry her. She's it left me immediately now i'm not feeling it again. no pain again give jesus praise yes ma'am praise the, praise the lord i used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002 but um when i went to see the doctor they said it was pneumonia it's, sometimes i can't breathe pneumonia the pastor said that we should shout jesus i can't breathe i can't shout too much but the moment i shout jesus i fell on the floor everything just left you no pain again praise the lord let me pray for you it never returns to you in the name of jesus i'm seeing someone with an eye problem i don't know what the eye problem is but it's living right now please confirm yourself eye problem check it check it we are not playing games please check it check it eye problems i'm seeing a miracle happening right now eye problem confirm it and come out right now i'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case at least 10 like the lower abdominal region right here you've been having se severe pain it's like something pulls you there check it right now you'll find out that you receive a miracle at least 10 people please make your way to the front at least 10 people check it right now god is doing a miracle don't sit back inside and outside lower abdominal region lower abdominal region that miracle is happening right now right now right now at least 10 people 10 people with that pain as soon as you check it make your way to the front celebrate jesus god is healing them they are coming they are coming all of you you can come and stand here the moment you receive a miracle please stand here they'll confirm you 
at least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region hallelujah i'm seeing a gentleman you came here with a throat condition in fact um let me just describe to you they are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat it's like there is an elongation some i'm seeing them saying they want to use is it knife or something and cut something that uh, an elongation who is that person the lord is healing you right now right now you can't swallow things you always feel like it's like bone but it's like there is something on your throat almost perpetually right now check it check it check it completely the power of god is coming upon you there is a lady god is healing your mother but the power of god will come upon you as a witness to that lord where is that lady right now where is that lady identify her oh god by the power of god right now right now right now please bring the lady out god is healing her mother right at home and god is using what is happening as as a point of contact as a point of contact i'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump i'm seeing one on the left left side please check it check it when you receive a miracle testimony is one way to seal it and keep it the lord is showing me three ladies your hair falls every time you go to comb your hair you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly please loud and straight to the point Praise the Lord. help I us sound please can you help us with this mic i used to have this pen down my stomach here but now i'm, I'm not feeling completely pain. gone yes are you sure yes. how long has it been Didn't come on koinonia let's not get too used to miracles in this place <laughs> hallelujah it never returns to you in the name of jesus christ the next person please my goodness look at what god is doing god is giving people miracles go ahead my name is like i'm pregnant it's to come like pain as in i'm pregnant and i've been complaining that for months but today when the prayer was going on i felt relieved and my stomach in fact open. as she was talking hold on the lord opened my eyes there is a lady your stomach is already swelling this is almost it's even beginning to embarrass you it's not just like a stomach protruding you are feeling it very hard and stiff um, it's, you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid please check it right now God is giving you a miracle God is giving you a miracle God bless you, bless you quickly when they say we should shout praise the so I now shout the stomach used to pay me even before I come to Zaria but I can't feel it again Completely gone. Yes. give Jesus praise it never returns again, yes please praise the Lord um, recently I started having this eye pain when I'm walking, doing other things, one of the eyes get blank and I don't see again. But now, after the prayers, I feel one sharp pain and I used to have this abdominal pain almost all the time, but it just left me immediately. If Jesus prays, it never returns to you again in the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Christ. This abdominal pain starts two days ago. So I came here and when I was praying, I just received total deliverance and complete deliverance please help them so that they don't fall on, on praise the lord the abdominal pain normally comes and go and when i was outside i was still feeling my stomach hooking such that i could not stand well i was bending and then when the man of god spoke i got up and stretched and to the glory completely of the lord, no pain again come on give jesus praise give jesus praise the lord mine is more of um creativity ideas that god used to give me every day when i'm in my quiet time and it's it happens that every time i try to push further i realize that there are a lot of setbacks distractions and uh, confusions that comes my way and right now, but what has right happened? now when at the mention of the name jesus i felt my body on fire 
I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes. of that creativity yes, co comes to you yes, in sir. the name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At a shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Completely. Believe me, that name works. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika concerning pain in the pain. joint. You went to the hospital. Yeah. What did they say is wrong with you? They, did, they couldn't see anything. They couldn't see anything. Yeah. Okay. And when you were praying, you prophesied that there is a uh, 10 people here that that God is working on yes, their system. And, and now what has happened to you? The pain is the gone. The pain is completely Even gone. Give Jesus praise. Even the medical report is in my room. The medical report is in your room. Yes. You go and check yourself and you find out. All of you that were under the anointing, where you get up, don't just go back to your seat. Check. You will find out that all kinds of things have happened. You are not just falling for nothing. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. I'm trusting God for a new set of dentition. My teeth are just... Go ahead. The power of God is on her. Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there's this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the case, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later, you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I noticed like the swelling up and sometimes I very I feel like very, a swelling there. Yeah. yeah. And I, now have you checked it? Yes. I, Is there I, anything I there? Okay Completely gone. Come on, give Jesus praise. It never returns again in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I don't thank God for the spirit of fear, as in I do get scared a lot, but I now I'm free in the name the of The spirit of fear. Come. It never returns to you again. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, praise please. the Lord. I want to I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child when, when I was when I was young. I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I I feel relieved. I just Completely. Want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know, sometimes 2nd of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her, fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I ca can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got healed. I announced, I I've saw been that shaking, a, a, a I've finger. Been shaking it. I've been shaking it and I'm No not pain now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Praise. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. This Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress Mama. If she's if she's out because she's sick, Mama is on as I make her door, please. You people should not stress this old woman. If she should, even when she's coming on, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her please the lord is is wiping the tears in your family you believe that when a word comes like it it comes to give you liberty hold my hands father in the name of jesus i end this oppression in this family right now it goes forever in the name of jesus who has an elder brother who has an elder brother do, do you have an elder brother yes. what is he doing he's a carpenter he's a carpenter yes the person i'm i'm talking about didn't go to school though is your brother he's, where is he he's in the village he's in the village god is going to lift him what is this thing that i'm seeing them <laughs> laughing at him and they are saying it it's not his fault that he didn't go to school even you is by the grace of god that you are here it's not like maybe yes. it's that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that is the favor of god yes but god as a sign go and tell him call him after koinonia that the lord said he's going to connect him to a rich man he should be faithful to that man amen. that man will bless him amen. father let there be breakthrough in this family in the name of jesus asabe 
Gabriel. Oh, your name is Gabriel. Your name too is Gabriel, sir. Who is Titi Lyo? Titi Lyo. I'm hearing a name, Titi Lyo. Please, let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Lyo. I'm hearing the name, Titi Lyo. Titi Lyo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing. The Lord is. Sir. It won't be too long. You are leaving Gusau. We spoke. At least we spoke. That one is not word of knowledge. We, we spoke about it. But it won't be too long. The Lord is lifting you to another place. Go and write it down. This will happen to you. It won't be too long. Write it down. You will come back and testify before them. It's not a disadvantage. It's something that will bless you in no small way. Because you have come with your heart open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I lay my hands, I pray. Right now. That you bring your word to pass concerning his life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hear breakthrough for you, sir. This is what I hear. The Lord is saying I should announce breakthrough to you. Father, I hold his hands and I announce breakthrough in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Your mother is sick. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past one year. Bleeding? You, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here. Huh? Your mother bleeding for one year non-stop. How about that? And you fell under the anointing. No, sir. You are just standing to agree yes, for her. Okay, sir. no problem. We have a session for that. But since you came out, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Look at me. Do you believe God will touch your mother? Where is she? Where is home? Taraba. Taraba State. Yes, sir. You are from Taraba. Yes, sir. Lord, show Mama mercy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As it touches you, it touches her. Please don't just come out at will. Ah, you are related to her. Your sister is Titi Lyon. Yes, sir. Where is she? She's in Cardinal. What's she doing? She's schooling at Cardinal. She's schooling. Okay, let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You? I'm a student, sir. Where? KPSS. Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her, is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? Because she has been praying about this. Your mother, where's your mother? Your mother has been joining her to pray. Yes, your sir. mother even went to a man of God and they prayed about yes. this thing. Is yes, that true? Sir. Your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Hallelujah. Now, please, this is the time to minister specially to sick people. You know the nature of our programs here. We will need a lot of time. So if you are not sick, if you are escorting somebody, please just bring the person and go back. And once they pray for you, don't wait for another prayer. One touch is okay. Some of you, when they pray for you, you refuse. You still stand back. Please, once they pray for you, just check yourself and go back. Praise the Lord. And then, don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that. If you came with somebody who is sick, now is the time to bring them out while we are praying. Please arrange them. Now is Mama's time. All, this, all our mothers, they can make their way now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. The power and love our God is an awesome God. Our God Please clear the way for them. Clear the way for sick people. Those under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere.
hallelujah now let's save time while we are praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please i permit you to put on your phone if you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests call them because what god is doing tonight is unusual call them and tell them there's fire upon this place they should submit their prayer request ushers please begin to go around those online those who are connecting with us through the internet they can also connect by faith as we trust god for miracles worship team please get set you'll be giving us powerful worship songs we'll just pray for our elderly ones let the lord touch them and then he will give us peace please and um, please um when we pray for you you clear the way you do mighty things you do glorious things stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother awesome is your name you do might, you do glory, you do glory, you are a faithful God, awesome is your name, awesome is your name. May God use you to wipe the tears of your parents. Listen, let me tell you, any child, hear me, I'm saying this especially to we young people, any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome, sir. Please sit down. Who's your dad? Welcome, sir. Straight, straight to the point. His legs are swollen because it's been long I saw him. Breathe well, and at the same time, he's having problem with mama. None of the children look at him except me. The same problem that mama is having, like breathe well. It's just similar thing. We are eight. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Daddy, sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be deliverance, O oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba, they will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now as I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ. And there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Your oh God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your 
name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at a very serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe? Listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Or what? Male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. And a spirit come. How will you like to have a child? That, do you know what it means for the brain not to develop? That child becomes like an imbecile forever. In the name that is above all names. We lay hands upon this child. We are not only praying that God will heal him, but God will use him. My God, I pray right now. Let the brain begin to develop. We cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness. Right now in the name of Jesus. From village, I go a lecture. I will charm from village. Look at this. Mama went for election. They fired something upon her head. Now she's mad. Is she mad? Is she your dog now? Yes. Yes. You are mad. No, you are. You are not mad in the name of Jesus. Say, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. In the name of Jesus. Whoever organized that charm on your head, it returns back to them sevenfold. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter, you are her daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free in the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? Come. Do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you? I'm looking at you. Don't feel embarrassed. Eh? 
I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing you smoking something. Eh? Tell me the truth. Don't tell lies. This is what death would have killed you. You are smoking a... Uh, uh, what do they call this thing? Eh? In Jahem, you go. Yes, sir. Is that not true? Yes, sir. You are smoking. The devil wants to kill you. This is. Look at. Look at this. Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a well wind on his head. You, you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding a go to it. Jesus came that you'll be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are, oh, you are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. You are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. We cancel those relationships right now. Amen. I'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people. Yes. They are smoking and they are giving you to smoke, but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you. Yes, you have to leave them. We cancel that relationship in Jesus' name. The Bible, hear me. Don't say I'm not doing it, but I'm sitting down where others are doing it. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law that he meditate day and night. I curse that madness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for supernatural healing. Look at me. Look at me. Lift your hands. Forget about the wound. Lift it up. Careful. You broke the hand. Oh, it can't lift. Oh, I see. No, no, no. If it can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself. I thought you broke your bone. That's why I was asking you to lift it. Father, let there be a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And anybody who smokes it go in this place. If you know you smoke it go or codeine. Altar, once I make the altar call. Just run and come and kneel down here. Because tonight is your night of salvation. Please, don't play games with your destiny. Anything you smoke, anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency. The moment there's time for altar call, please make your way here. We love you. But then the Lord wants to touch you. Let's hurry up because our time is gone. Your name is here. Out.
Request right now. At the same time, an altar call is co- as an altar call will be going. Those who need Jesus Christ, you are here right now, inside and outside. There are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies. The ones that I spoke to. Now is the time. You can come before the presence of God. Don't feel bad. We're a family. And any other person, there are those who are saying, "Lord, I'm tired of the way my life is." I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time. But please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you. Seriously and completely. From this night, take over my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Let your life come upon me. I break free from habits, from sins, and everything that destroys my life. From today, I'm a child of God. I am saved in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for these ones. Unashamedly, they have come before you. Preserve them by your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will use them mightily in the name of Jesus. I break the power of sin over your life. You will never return, especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking. You will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is broken from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to follow a gentleman. They will have your details. And then on Tuesday, unfailingly, please be around. Um, meet with the prayer department. 
and um, he'll fire you up. You'll be with them for at least a month. They will guide you. The gentleman is waving his hand. Salute them, everybody. Congratulate them. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request in one minute. Please, everybody, rise. We're rounding up. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. Your request is here. Begin to speak. Prophesy. Prophesy over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy over it. Prophesy over it. Lord, unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Are you praying? Lord, do miracles. Every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here, we judge that spirit. Every spirit, every covenant, every influence. Makata lato desetebe. Mande brendo so so prida balada bas kapreti gede bele de bos. Brendo so prete kete bele de bos. Every spirit responsible for barrenness here, yeah. responsible for any setback. In the name of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. Lord, let your people have testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that every request, every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. And you will stand to testify before the people of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Now lift your hands and receive the prophecy. I decree and I declare over you. Every confusion in your life. Every cry for direction. Right now in the name of Jesus. May you receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Every area of confusion, I arrest it right now. You will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are students, I pray for your academics. The exams that are about to come. Your best result in your various institutions. This exam is what will produce it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you record five points. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for every family represented here. Whatever has stagnated your family. By this anointing I declare. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has covered your glory. So that the glory of the Lord upon your life will not be seen. In the name of Jesus we tear that veil off. We tear that veil off. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Whoever needs to help you. Before next miracle service. I call them forth into your life. Mysterious help us. Mysterious help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Fresh grace for prayer. Fresh anointing for prayer. Every lack of passion for the things of God. I kill it right now in the name of Jesus. Every carnality and flesh. And wordlessness and prayerlessness. That is eating up your life. It dies a natural death here tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. With these hands that are lifted, go and begin to produce results. Go and heal the sick. Go and open doors for the oppressed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle marriages. We release those marriages right now. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle jobs. We release those jobs right now. Please believe me as I pray. We release those jobs right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death. 
that the devil has said you will not see the end of this year in the name of jesus we lift up that embargo we lift up that embargo favor like you have never seen receive it right now open doors like you have never seen receive it right now breakthroughs like you have never seen receive it right now i speak life to every dying thing in your life in the name of jesus christ whoever has rejected you may they look for you in the name of jesus christ i command prophetic dreams mysterious spiritual experiences may god show you the solution to your problems in dreams and visions whoever is behind the failure of your life we command judgment upon them in the name of the lord jesus christ i prophesy unto you access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to deep revelation access to insight in the spirit whenever they are looking for men to favor may they find you may they find you in the name of jesus you are blessed in the city and blessed in the country you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of jesus i declare that the seal of the blood is upon you you have no covenant with failure you have no covenant with death may god use you mightily 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 i declare may the mantle of honor come upon your life that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence I cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death i rebuke it from your life in jesus name and every depression upon your spirit i release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of jesus finally i pray for you passion for the things of god hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of jesus all those worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front right now very quickly we're really out of time we have two minutes and we're out please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us some have come from far some from near different states please come we have a prayer and a blessing for you celebrate them koinonia keep clapping they are coming may god bless all of you who have invited them their lives will never be the same in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international mm -hmm. you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ I see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically I'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically I prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of Jesus Christ for one of you the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before october your wedding will happen before december 31st 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we decree and declare over your life, you will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of God. There is someone here, you are standing, you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch. One week, every night, repeatedly. You're going to have different people come to teach you certain things. And on the sixth night, you're going to have an impartation. It's like a hand that will be laid upon you. It's not demonic. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you. Return with evidences. Return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for coming. We love you and we honor you. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands. They'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then you'll have a few details. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and nekata. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.